Welcome to the Cook's Domain. Today, we're gonna to make fried chicken. And there's lots of recipes for fried chicken, and frankly, they're all very good. Just make up your own little breading mix, and uh, it's gonna be great. But the reason I'm doing this video is the elusive one, the 11 herbs and spices, um, my version of the KFC breading. And like all of us, we love it for some reason. And no matter how good we make another breading, no matter how good we make a fried chicken, we're always coming back and comparing to that. The only problem is, is I don't have 11 herbs and spices. Um, I have 11 if you include the salt, but KFC says theirs doesn't include the salt, so that would be 12. And I think what I've got is, is pretty, pretty accurate. So if you wanna make uh, your own KFC at home, then I think this is the only recipe out there that's uh, accurate to some degree, at least in, in taste, it's accurate. Okay, so to make the fried chicken, there's a couple of things that we need to know, need to do um, before we begin. Firstly, I wanna say that this is not about saving money, by the way. KFC is about as cheap as takeaway food can be. Um, but they obviously bulk buy their chickens in massive quantities or they own their own farms. It costs them so little. Um, we can't get chicken that cheap. But that's not a bad thing because I think whenever I've made this, I've always felt at least the chicken was far, far better than what I get at KFC. Juicier, better flavor, etc. So you're not going to save money. Um, but what you will get is a far better product. And that's what, what is the point of making this. Now, the first thing we need to start with is preparing our chicken. Now, what I do is I buy a whole bird and I will cut it up into pieces. If you want to cut it exactly into the KFC pieces, you can. You should get nine pieces out of it and you would half the bird first, uh, leg and thigh, uh, breast and the rib cage. And then you would quarter those and then you would cut those again down in half where you would get eight. But the rib, uh, but the breast part, what what um, what they do at KFC is the very edge of the breast that comes like this with the bone in the middle. They'll cut that piece off and make this smaller breast piece, and then the rest of the breast is just part of the rib piece. Um, but that's up to you how you do it. And the, once you've done that, you're going to have to marinate it. Now I marinate in buttermilk. Now if you don't have buttermilk or can't get buttermilk, that's not a problem. For 250 mils of full fat milk one tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. That's it, mix it together, leave it to the side for 10 minutes for it to curdle. Then with a fork, give it another whisk just to re-smooth that curdled mixture together. Pour it over your chicken and put it in the fridge overnight. That's the only preparation I would do. And what it does is it just gives a slightly better flavor but a better texture to the chicken. Again, this isn't something you need to do. You can just skip this step and go straight into what I'm gonna show you next. But if you really want to replicate that KFC flavor at the very least, I would highly recommend that you do this. Okay, whenever you're gonna bread anything to fry, you know we have like a, usually an egg mixture and an either a breadcrumb mixture or a flour mixture. And we wanna obviously do that here as well. Now I don't wanna make a new uh, batter when I've already got loads of this uh, buttermilk in here. So the first thing I do is separate the milk, uh, the, sh the chicken from the marinade. It's gonna go back in, but I wanna separate it because I wanna get an egg now into this mixture. Let's put that in there now. Let's whisk that egg into our buttermilk. Now you could, and I have done it in the past, is actually put the egg straight into the marinade mixture but I've found that my results haven't always been very, very good. I'm guessing the egg somehow interferes with the marination. So for the first part, I don't do this anymore. I now add the egg when I'm ready to cook. So now that I've mixed that egg straight into this marination, I can now put the chicken back in here and make sure that I get a nice coating. Each chicken is gonna be nicely coated each piece, I should say, will be nicely coated in this mixture. I should say that you can also do this with chicken wings, and that's a great way of making a really delicious meal with very little money, because chicken wings costs, I don't know, nothing. <laughs> For, you can get 12, 15 wings, maybe more, uh, 
in a box in our supermarkets for a pound, pound fifty. Um, depends where you go. And they're wonderful, absolutely delicious. Now we can just put them to one side, ready to be used. Now we want to get our breading ready. So why make a breading that's KFC-like? Well, there's hundreds of recipes for fried chicken, and I've done many, many, many different recipes, and they're all great. Never done one that I thought, wow, this doesn't work. They're all fantastic, and I really enjoy it, and the whole family enjoys it. But we always come back to wanting that KFC flavor. So the reason I'm doing a video on this is, anyone can make a breading for fried chicken. You know, just start mixing stuff up and do it, you know, it's, and I'm sure it'll be pretty good, you know. It'll be very different, very unique, and I'm sure very enjoyable. But if you want the KFC flavor, that is hard work because we have to figure it out. And I've done many, 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 many experiments figuring it out. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos, I've read a lot of websites, and I've tried to figure out what everybody else is doing, and, I, and I've done it. And I would replicate those recipes and find out that most of them are liars. It doesn't taste anything like KFC. And that kind of annoys me, to be fair. Making videos, thousands of views, and uh, what, what they give us is utter garbage. It doesn't work. It's never, you know, hasn't been correct. So I've constantly been tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking until I've got to something now that I think is extremely close. And I mean so close that I, because I've blind tested every, every time I've done it, I've blind tested. And I've now got to a point where no one has been able to tell the difference. But when it came to choosing which piece they preferred, always they've chosen mine. And I think it's got nothing to do with the coating. I don't think it was the coating that gave it away. I think it was the quality of the chicken. Uh, because I think the chicken that we're going to use, that we're going to buy from our butchers or our supermarkets, is far superior to the quality of the chicken that KFC is using. Um, but with regard to the coating, no one's been able to tell the difference. I think it's that close. Um, even me, when I blind tested myself, um, I've had struggled distinguishing these. So, um, unlike a lot of videos where I've replicated a lot of their recipes and it being nothing like KFC, I mean, not even close, there are so many recipes, and I did it myself as part of testing, that had huge amounts of paprika in it. I need to find that there's probably actually no paprika in the KFC version, but if there is, it's very little. My version does have a little. And it gives a color to my coating that I think is a little darker than uh, KFC's. And I'm still always playing with this recipe and I might reduce my paprika yet. I don't know, but right now I know this recipe works. I know it's fantastically close. So I'm gonna give you my uh, 11 herbs and spices here. Mine includes the salt, KFC says it doesn't. So they clearly have something else that I don't have. Um, but I, I genuinely think this is extremely close and I hope you guys give it a go and uh, see uh, for yourselves. Okay, so the base of our breading clearly is going to be flour. You can use plain or all-purpose flour. Uh, I don't use that and I don't think KFC does either because plain flour is not very finely milled in comparison to cake flour or self-raising flour, uh, which is more finely milled and that's what we need a very fine milled flour now you can buy very finely milled flour specialist places etc and it'll probably cost you more money here's what i do i use actual cake flour self-raising flour i know there are chemical agents in here to help this rise um, but you will get a far superior breading using this than you would using all-purpose flour the only thing i would say is if you're gonna be making this quite regular, like we do, we make it at least once a month, I would have thought, um, is get some self-raising flour, put it to the back of the cupboard, and start aging your self-raising flour. Never use that flour to make a cake with it, though. It's only for breading, right? Whether it's gonna be chicken or other things, only use it for breading, because the chemical agents in here have an expiry. Um, maybe you've noticed it yourself with your own, you know, little jars of, bicarbonate of soda or baking soda or baking powder where you, you know you'd buy those fresh to make a cake and then you put it away and then three six nine months later you decide you want to make another cake and it doesn't come out as good because that they, they, they start to fail to work they expire because I don't really want the agents in here to do what they do so I've got always a couple of older bags of self-raising flour that I will use for the purpose of breading that's just a little tip but if you don't have that right now either get very finely milled soft flour 
which isn't easy to find by the way it's it's strange but you know you you, you have to go online and you probably pay a lot of money for it or just use self-raising flour for now okay the agents will still have some effect um it's not a huge difference to be honest i'm just a bit of a perfectionist and it, it's a very mild difference but if you can you know age a couple of self-raising flour uh, bags of flour that would be best and that's what i have here first thing we want to add to our 200 grams of flour is three and a half grams of white pepper now when i've told people this in the past they're a bit stunned and then I tell them next time you have KFC really try and taste the coating and you will taste it it's the predominant flavor in KFC's uh, breading is white pepper okay the next ingredient we're going to add is two and a half grams of black pepper now this is finely ground black pepper you don't have to have it this finely ground. If you look at KFC's own breading, you will find little flecks of black pepper within it, which means it's slightly less ground than I have here. This is finely ground. Um, so if you want it to really look like the KFC breading as well, um, I would grind this less finely and you know more like a, gr a cracked black pepper consistency, but even that sometimes is a little too big. So somewhere in between fine and cracked black pepper. So that's two and a half grams of black pepper. Our next ingredient is a half a gram of paprika. Not smoked paprika, just regular paprika. Half a gram. Let's drop that in. Our next ingredient is 0.4 grams. And you're going to be like, oh my God, these ridiculous numbers. Granted. Um, but it's like chemistry, you know, we have to get it spot on. I've had a bit more, I've had a bit less. It didn't taste quite right, it wasn't spot on. So I'm trying to get this as right as possible for you guys. Just as just for me, I'm a bit of a, of a perfectionist, as I've said. And it's only 0.4 grams of ginger powder. So let's drop that in as well. Our next addition is 0.5 grams, so half a gram of coriander powder. Drop that straight in. I'm going to leave these three for a minute and go straight to this one, which is 0.5 grams of celery salt. It is sold in all the supermarkets. So it's only a half a gram of celery salt. Okay, so what have we got left? We have a half a gram of sage leaves, dried sage leaves, which I'm going to put into my pestle and mortar. Now, as you can see, this is quite chunky, as it were. You know, it's, it's crushed leaves, but it's not fine enough for us. We need to grind this down to a powder. I also have 0.3 grams of parsley and marjoram mix. 50-50 mix. Now, if you can get dried parsley, dried marjoram uh, separately, I have a, a tub that's just a herb mix that has an equal proportion of both. And together, it is 0.3 grams of parsley and marjoram. So that also isn't fine enough. Straight into the pestle and mortar. And now I'm going to grind this into as much of a powder as I can get it. Obviously, if you have a a grinding machine you can do that and there we have it it's pretty finely ground and let's get that into our powder as well and our next ingredient is 25 grams of ordinary salt now, why have I put that into the pestle and water? That's also far too uh, granulated for us. This is just not gonna work. We need it to be a powder. So again, grind the salt. Okay, so our salt now is like a powder or as powdery as we can get it. But the more you work it, the better, to be honest. And let's sprinkle that in as well. And there we have it. All we need to do now is mix. Okay. 
Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get your uh, fryer on. I've got mine set to 180 degrees Celsius. If you don't have a fryer, just get a big pot, uh, no more than a quarter of the way up on the pot, you know, of oil, or at least enough oil to cover chicken pieces once you put them in. And you're gonna need a thermometer with that to get up to 180 degrees uh, when you put the chicken in. First thing I'm gonna do is bread this chicken. So I'm gonna coat it nicely in this uh, liquid, drain off the excess, one hand dry, one hand wet. All right, let's now sit this into our breading. Let me move this out of the way so we can see better. And what I do is gently just bring up the flour because I don't want to get the dry hand wet. There we go. Just try and cover it all completely in the flour, the breading. Do the same. Now what I do to really get that KFC kind of feeling, they don't muck about at KFC. They absolutely cover their chicken in breading and I like finding thick coating on my chicken to really squish that in once we've breaded our chicken we can now put it on the rack to get our next piece using the wet the wet hand let's make sure we cover it in the uh, in the marinade in the and straight into the flour Press it down using the dry hand. Let's get this on everywhere. Okay, once we've breaded it nicely, let's put it on the rack. Now I think my fryer can probably fry two or three pieces at any one go. Um, but get as much chicken ready as, as many as that you can fry. Don't just bread everything and have pieces that have been breaded sitting here for 40 minutes until they until it's their turn to be fried because it won't be right it won't taste right it, the texture will be completely different okay so these have now been resting for 10 minutes they need another 20 another 10 minutes before we put them in the fryer but now what we can do because they only take 10 minutes to cook we can now bread the next set that's going to go in so that way we've constantly got a rotation of chicken that's being breaded and being fried so now I'm just going to bread our next uh, lot of chicken. I'm just going to set it slightly apart from the other, from the first lot. That way I know that they're the next batch. Okay, so this first row has been resting for 20 minutes and it's ready to go in the fryer. This second row is now at 10 minutes. I'm now going to put this first row into the fryer. And once it's in the fryer, I'm going to bread my last lot so that they can start resting for 20 minutes. When this lot are done, the second row will be ready to go in, and then when that will be ready, then that third row will also go straight in. So we're constantly gonna have a rotation where we can constantly be frying. Now, because I can't do the entire batch in one go, I've also set my oven on to about 80 degrees Celsius. It's a very low heat, it won't cook the chicken anymore, it will just keep it nice and hot, warm, so that when we eat it, it's all fresh. It does actually have though, one extra advantage. It makes, for some reason, it makes the chicken not be as oily as it is when it straight comes straight out of the fryer. So it's good to put it in the oven. I don't know why, but it just crispens up the, um, uh, the coating just a, just a tad more and dries out just that oil. But the chicken will still be extremely juicy on the inside. So let's get it in. Now the first tip I'm going to give you with regard to this is once you've got your chicken pieces in, I'm going to put the biggest piece in first. Once you've got your chicken pieces in, what I want you to do is shake the basket. Now the reason for that is so that the chicken pieces A don't stick to each other and B don't stick to the basket. So as I lower it in, I just give them a little shake. And what this doing is just making them jump on the inside so that the coating actually starts to cook and not forming around the basket. There we go. Now we can set our timer. Now I said it takes about 10 minutes to cook this chicken. It all depends on the size. If you do it roughly the same size as KFC's pieces, it will be about 10 minutes. Mine are a little larger, so I'm actually gonna cook them for about 11, maybe 12 minutes. 
Okay, so these ones are now ready. Get them out. And I'm just going to straight into my warm oven. Look at that. Beautiful. And there we have it. Fried chicken with some fries. Uh, I know the United States doesn't, I don't think their KFC sells it with fries, I think it's with mash. Um, but here we get it with fries, this very limp style fry, which is what I tried to replicate. But I cooked it in the same oil as I did the chicken, so we got a little bit of that flavor on there as well. Um, now it's time for the uh, tasting. Just grab a drumstick from here, see what this is like. Hmm. It's so good. Is the coating identical? I've still got a little bit of tweaking to do, but it is really close. It is really close. But the chicken, this is juicy, delicious. Oh, I've got to take another bite. Mm, that is so good. Try that. You will not be disappointed. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching.